we've made new changes to the project, we've added new features, this is enough, I would say, for a new version of the project um, to be uploaded to the App Store. So I'm going to make sure Kodika.js and index.html are saved, and I will close those. And then I'm going to open the config XML file. Before I can submit a new version to the App Store, I need to make at least one change. So back to the config XML file. You should see Android version code 1. Well, I'm going to submit a brand new version to Amazon. And Amazon, like Google Play, requires a new Android version code. So that's whole numbers. I'm going to change this to Android version code 2. It's the latest version code. That's the only thing I need to change. I could keep this version number the same if I wanted. I won't actually. I'm going to say 1.2.11.29. I'm keeping it in the main 1.0 family. I didn't make such a radical change that I felt it's a 2.0. And these numbers are rather arbitrary. You don't have to have some sort of like. Uh, set in stone rule about when it's 2.0, 3.0, and so forth. I want to keep it as 1.0 because I didn't change the design of the project. I didn't add the underlying functionality of the project in a big meaningful way. The app still works the same as before. So I'm keeping it as 1. But I am doing a dot 2. I'm saying that's significant enough to change. And then the final digits are just the date. So this number is completely arbitrary. And if you wanted to, it could have been a 2.1.2016.11.29. That's fine. But what's required is the version code. Make sure you change that one to 2. It's whole numbers, integers. I'm save that. I'm going to save and close that config file, and I'm going to have open my, my handout to remind me. We need to type the taco build release version, which also includes your JKS file. So hopefully you still have that JKS file somewhere. As I said, it's very important. Uh, it identifies you as a developer, and it'll let you keep coming back to that project. Taco build Android space dash dash release. Space dash dash with nothing. Space dash dash key store equals and whatever path where your key store is at, mine is on my flash drive, drive F. So then I have F colon backslash the name of my keystore.jks space dash dash alias the unique identifier in the keystore most likely the same name of the keystore Check your spelling and then enter. You'll get a pop-up asking you for the password. Two pop-ups.
So eventually that should build. Mine took one minute, and I get the release ready version. So I need to go into the folder of my app, dig down into the platforms, Android, build, outputs, APK. I have the latest version of the release ready APK. I'm going to move or copy that up to the root level of my flash drive. And then give it the name of my scheme. I was using my SDCE-1 previously, so I've still got the old version from two weeks ago. And then now I'm going to name that as 2. If I wanted to, I can have the 1 version and the 2 version. So that went from 961k to 973k, that extra, that extra code. Having that, then it's time to go over to the App Store and upload a new version. So I'm going to go back to the App Store with the same credentials that I used from two weeks ago. Developer.amazon.com I'll sign in. So two weeks ago, I had the notification about that I submitted my app, and then shortly after that, it was approved. So I have notifications there. It doesn't say an actual time, just a date, but um, my app was submitted. So I need to release a version 2 of this project. I will not go to add a new app. It's not a new app, it's a new version uh, of the app. So I'd have to go back to a listing of my apps, hover over to get the gear, and then from the gear edit current version. I can get complex and add um, different versions for different operating systems. I could also schedule different versions to be released. I think the simplest way for most of us is that we have one version of the app that is available at all times. So you did see that there was also the option for add upcoming version. Again, this will this will get more complex in that we've got here's a version for Android 3.0 people and here's a version for Android 4.0 people that's something that you could do but I think it's a little more cumbersome to be that fine-grained to be that differentiated so I'm gonna recommend to always just have one version of the app that'll be editing the current version and what I would need to change then is uh, the binary. Actually notice also we have a new tab, review status. Since we've already got one app that has been made public, any changes then 
or a new version that need to be reviewed. And the review process on Amazon is, is much, much less stringent than, than the iTunes App Store. So under the binaries screen, I would need to go to Well, it looks like they've changed a couple of things. It looks like they've made it easier to uh, remove the app from the App Store. There's an actual button there. It used to be just a, probably one semester ago when I taught this, there was a more complicated process to remove it from the App Store. But now under the at the bottom right corner, there's that option remove from the App Store. It also seems like they um, they are going to focus on an upcoming version. It, when I taught this last time under binary, we were able to edit the binary. There's an edit button to switch it out for the new version. Hmm. It's not there at the moment, so I guess I would need to add the upcoming version. Okay, that seems to be right. Okay, so I did go to upcoming version. There's a current version which is live. There's an upcoming version. And we've got remove binary, save and add a binary, binary file. This is the part about you can have multiple versions of the APK file for different versions of, of devices. So I'm going to remove the one, my STCE1. I've got a backup of it, and I will replace that with the version 2 that I just compiled. Okay, so I was testing things out. I changed some of these package IDs, and it's telling me wrong package ID. Okay, so that's an easy fix in the config file in my case. And I have to build it again.
I was trying to upload a version with my config XML file as a different name and Amazon caught it because then it would technically be a different app. So all you have to do is change the ID and it's a different app. I'm not trying to upload a different app, I'm updating my current app. So I had to fix my config XML file and recompile. Okay, so try that one more time. I've got the right package ID that matches the existing one. I've recompiled it. And, oh, I should pay attention. It's .com, not .xyz. You see sometimes these little details are speed bumps, but then when you've got them all worked out, I got the properly uploaded binary, it's the version 2, everything looks good there, no extra testing instructions, binary alias number 2. Right, so if this is going to be a new version of the project, I have a new tab. I have release notes tab. Well, what's been changed? What's updated for this new version? I have some spot here to make some changes. And I often see, I like to read the release notes of, of apps many times. Some of them are written very well and some of them are terrible. Some of them really just say something like, you know, bug fixes, and it's a terrible update. But I see that very commonly. Others are very um, direct and say, like, what features have been changed, and then others write a little story, like Snapchat. They want to be your friend, so they write release notes that are very conversational. In any event, things have been changed here, so I'm going to say new features. 
uh, contact developer, share app via your favorite social networks. Updates. Um, class uh, saving feature features only now only available for Android four plus and iOS seven plus. Well, we also had Windows. Windows 8 Plus. So it's very good to give this uh, feedback to your users about what's changed, why would they download it. Nowadays, more people have the auto update feature that just behind the scenes, their apps update. For those that turn it off and they choose to do updates manually, it's good to write here what's good, so good about updating. Personally, I remember I've used Instagram for a long time. I've used Instagram since like it debuted, week one, and I remember it changing from version one to two and so forth. And I remember um, they had changed Instagram, one of the filters that I really liked. There was a filter called Gotham which was like a very dark and contrasty black and white filter. But then they took it out in a subsequent version. So I held on to version 1.0 of Instagram for so long, and it was missing so many features that everyone else was getting, but it was missing that um, filter. Eventually I relented, I did get the new version, I lost the filter, but it got other features. So if you let people know what are you going to get if you update, that's good. Then the, they can make a decision what they want to do. But I am seeing for more people, it's an often auto update. Yes? Have you noticed that um, when the apps update, that they do that auto update feature sometimes? You know, I'll, I'll change, I'll shift an app from the, the device memory to my memory card mm -hmm. because it's trying to save room on the phone. Yeah. But then when they update, they seem to want to default back to phone memory, is there any advantages to, or reasons why, do you know? I think the internal memory of the device might be a little faster than the external memory because you have to interface out to it. And right. You've got a slow memory card, well, the app's possibly a little slower to react. But I think also a lot of it is just perhaps laziness. There are options in the config file that you can write that say automatically save to external memory, automatically save to internal memory, force save to internal memory, force save to external memory. The default is automatic, but it favors internal memory. So we can set it that it would favor going to external memory, but that would assume that a person has a memory card installed. And any of the permissions like that, that are associated with the app, are, are any of those specific to the, the phone memory that you know of? Like, I'd have to I'd have to double check, but I, I have I have seen that there is the device um, storage plugin permission. Um, most likely you would want to activate that if you are saving your app to the external memory because that's what you're doing. You're accessing external memory and therefore you should ask for that permission or let the users know that that's what you need to use. I thought um, maybe, you know, because if they, if they want to access your, your contacts or your camera or anything like that, I didn't know if any of those would be not possible if it was saved on your like on your memory card and that might be the reason why they're trying to save to your device memory. But the most of these permissions I believe they're independent. If you activate 
camera that should not depend on if you've allowed access to contacts or vice versa. But oftentimes, people use them in tandem. Developers use them in tandem. You want to take a photo to then be able to send it to your friends and family, so let's activate contacts to send it that way. We saw through our plugin of the social sharing, though, it doesn't need contacts. The user then decides to choose, decides how to send um, the photo if they took a photo without us having to ask for the permission of the contacts because we're not tapping into contacts that way. We're letting them tap into it. Now this is a new version of my project. I need the seventh tab. I'm going to add my updates here and save that. I've got seven out of seven. So then it'll show this. These are the release notes. It all runs it together as one line. It would have been nicer as multiple lines. And that's what I've written there. And that's a very direct number of release notes. I could be uh, more interesting. And if you look at the release notes of various apps that you work with, let me just pull up one briefly and see if I find anything interesting. Some of these say something like, good news, we've got a new version of the app for you, and then it shows what new features it has. So if you want to write that way, you also can. So my device here says what's available to be updated is Instagram. If I go look at the release notes, it says what's new? Introducing two more ways to share freely and in the moment. Disappearing photos and videos and live stories. And then a couple little paragraphs. So that one's pretty detailed. If I look at Twitter, that one's waiting to be updated as well. Mine simply says, what's new? A few updates to make Twitter even better. Happy tweeting. And no explanation of what those updates are. It just says, new updates. Happy tweeting. So those are the two extremes, that they're detailed and that they're just telling you there's an update, but no reason why to update. I'm going to say at this point I'm, I'm ready for the app to go. So I will submit it, and with, within 24 hours or so it should be available for people. It'll start to trickle down to the people that have downloaded it. It'll give them the notification if they, if they have it set that way, or it'll do auto-update in the background, and now they'll have a new version. And if they check those release notes, they'll know what's new. It says by 8.30 tomorrow. All right, we'll take one more break, and when we come back, we'll talk about uh, targeting other platforms. We've been doing Android all this time. Let's also then start to touch on other other platforms like iOS. So um, it's 8.30. We'll take a break until 8.40.